This is Twit. Uber, Waymo, Tesla, Apple, just a few of the names that we talk about uh, self-driving car news and we talk about it on the show a lot. But today's guest says that one of the hottest startups in this space is one you've probably never heard of. Uh, welcome back to the show, CNN tech writer, Matt McFarland. How's it going, Matt? Very good. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. It's great to get you back. So um, I, I feel like we've talked about Drive uh, AI on the show in the past. Tell us a little bit about Drive.ai and what you know about them. Sure. Drive.ai is a, a Silicon Valley startup. Uh, they're basically building the technology uh, to drive a, a vehicle, whether it's a truck or a car. Uh, they're based in Mountain View, California. Uh, it was started by a bunch of students uh, who met uh, in grad school at uh, Stanford. And they've been at it for about two years now and have shown a lot of growth. They just announced that they raised uh million dollars uh so wow okay so they've got they've got some momentum going on here and i mean if you see some of these these setups drive.ai it's it's a roof mounted system um and so it kind of sticks out a little bit they've actually got screens on the top of the cars uh right now why are those necessary when when compared to kind of other competitors in the space or even traditional cars why do they have screens on the top yeah, it, it's fairly bulky, um, and but so their thinking was that they want a way uh, for the vehicle to really communicate with, say, pedestrians or any any human who might be on the road. Uh, it's not, you know, as easy for us to tell a robotic car, or you know, what we're doing when you might be a pedestrian, and it's you know tough for a car to say, oh, why don't you cross the street now? But if they can display that uh, on their screen, then there's real value there. So. Hey, Matt, um, Carrie here. My question is, you know, just just looking over your story, I knew immediately that car makers like Ford and even um, Delphi in the space, but in particular, sort of the more established car manufacturers will say like, that's all great. But we've already been making cars. We're the experts in this field. Um, not to mention that their cars built in have more than just the stuff on the top, but they have sensors, you know, all around the front. I think Ford's latest effort has something like 200 sensors all around the car, not just at the top. So how are they competing with that? Right. So uh, Drive.ai isn't going to start manufacturing uh, their own cars. They, they know what they are really good at. And that's software, that's artificial intelligence and, and deep learning. Uh, they aren't going to, you know, start making vehicles. Uh, their, their role is really to be kind of the brains, uh, the thinking, the cognitive aspect of the self-driving car. Uh, so the thinking is that they will essentially be a partner um, and supply these kits. Uh, initially, they'll do a, a retrofit kit that would be sold to a business that could add it to their vehicles and then use it for something like ride hailing or logistics or delivery. Um, kind of reminds me a little bit of, uh, of comma.ai, right? That was, uh, yeah, <laughs> that, well, that was, I mean, that, that was going to be a retrofit car as a uh, car kit as well. Right. Right. Yeah. Comma. That was right. That you would um, essentially the comma is a little bit simpler. The the idea of what the, the dash cam that you kind of pop in uh, and whatnot. The drive I, I set up seems a little bit more um, robust. Um, Matt, can you tell me how many sensors then they have at the top? Uh, shoot off. I want to say it's probably about a dozen total, but I. I Okay. I don't have the, the numbers in front of me, but yeah, it's a variety of sensors, uh, you know, cameras, LIDAR, radar, like uh, essentially basically what almost everyone in the space is using. Um, okay. And, the, and then a nice big screen on the very front. Do they have plans to kind of tighten it up a little bit and make it a little, any more elegant than it, than it is at this point? You know, I, I didn't ask them that specifically, but I, I do think we'll see them follow kind of that typical tech evolution where you go from the large uh, Michael Douglas or say, you know, uh, the, the the huge cell phone down to the smaller, sleeker one. So. <laughs> down to, from, from Michael Douglas to Zoolander is where we're going to go, <laughs> right? right? Okay. Exactly. Um, and who exactly are they are they planning on selling these kits to? Is it direct? It's It's partnerships? What are their plans there? Right. Yeah. Yeah. They're looking at businesses. Um, they're different from, say, 
like a Waymo who you might see really um, thinking a lot about consumers and say getting kids to soccer practice or something. Uh, Drive, Drive AI is, is really thinking about uh, the, the enterprise sector. Um, what can they do, for example, with, say, uh, helping get a delivery from one warehouse to another? Uh, when I, I talked to their CEO, he mentioned trust in, say, even municipal um, vehicles so that they could see maybe helping with an emergency response vehicle or a fire truck or something on the road. Um, Hmm, okay. Hmm. Now, um, also some news. Andrew Ng uh, just joined the board of directors. What uh, what's important about this move? Why do you th- why do you think this is important for Drive AI? Right. So uh, Andrew is hey, he's a big name in the world of AI. He's had some really important jobs. He's accomplished a lot. Uh, he's in touch with the cutting edge the tip of the spear of what can be done with AI. So to have Andrew there uh, helping to chart their their strategy and what they're going to be doing with AI, uh, that's just really valuable to have someone of his caliber in the room to say, hey, have we thought about trying this or that, or maybe we should hire this person or, or whatnot. And it, it should help too with say recruiting. Uh, everybody wants the best people in self-driving cars. So to have him on board is is appealing. Um, Matt, I know how um, skeptical everyone is or hesitant they are to talk about price, but are they talking about sort of ballpark for how much this might cost? Uh, no, I, I can't speak to any price um, at this time, yeah. So well, then we'll just have to keep saying. Certainly, be more expensive, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've got yeah, some, I've got some money in my pocket, but I don't think it's enough for for this. Two dollars. Yeah, two dollars. <laughs> All right, right, cool. I'm sold. We can we can make it an episode of know how here. Um, and and the the overall goal, the the long far reaching goal here, I guess, would be the big differentiator between something like Comma, which isn't actually a real product. So I don't know why I'm comparing it to them. At one point, it was possibly going to be a, a product that consumers could GitHub. install. Yeah, GitHub. exactly. Now, exactly. Now it's been open sourced. Um, and, but the, but the idea here is that this is not appealing to the consumer that just wants to do their own self driving kit. Uh, this is this is really targeted at enterprise uh, solutions. Right, exactly. Selling businesses. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, Matt McFarland, uh, you're a tech writer at CNN, and we really appreciate you uh, coming on the show and, and talking to us a little bit about this. Thank you so much for joining us. Where can people find you on Twitter? Uh, I'm at Matt McFarland on Twitter. Awesome. So, thanks for having me. Absolutely. It's great to get you back, Matt, and we'll talk to you soon. Have a great yeah, night. Sounds good.